Hello guys, this is Maya from Josotech and in this particular video I'll be walking you through Triabilitech Irregular Network also called TIN. TIN helps us make sense of um, elevation data that have been taken from the world field, probably depth data and height data that you've gotten from the field as point value. So TIN helps us to define the pattern of this value using um, QGIS or RGIS and data. So that's what we're doing in this particular video, so please stay tuned. Okay, okay guys, so now let me let me bring in the, the data that I want to use, the, the biometric data that I want to use to, um, to create the triangulated irregular network. And from there, we use that same um, output to create a condom. So, like I said, triangulated real network um, are useful in visualizing um, elevation data. They are used to represent um, surface morphology. So here, we are bringing in the data gotten from the bathymetric survey. So, and that data is in CSV format. So, just like we import any vector data I'm going to go to layer then add layer then bring in the csv data as the limited test layer so let me just go to the folder where you have the data so sounding data so this is over here csv so you can see automatically um tgs has a few the x and y field so you can see the preview here, so the still the notice and the depth and the depth. Mm -hmm. So let's add close. So this is our data. Let's label this to view to make it um, more understandable. So then so you go to labels uh, oh sorry, single label. So what field? Why isn't the depth field? Apply. Okay. Oh, I think we should make the <coughs> the test a little bit smaller. Then okay, the test size is ten. So let's this to five. Yeah. Okay. Alright. That's good. So here we can view the data called if we having this kind of data, it is not actually representing anything. We are just seeing like a single point, individual point on a, on a map interface with um, with height values. So that's why it is useful to use them because it helps you um, represent them this data to able for you to be able to understand the the patterns and the distribution uh, among the word values. So now for you to to carry out a TIN, you need to go to your processing toolbox and type TIN interpolation. Let me just click enter. I'm sorry. Interpolation. So there you go. This is it over right here. So this is it. TIN interpolation. So you open it double click so here you have the window to input your your data and the turn will be generated so you can see the under the parameters vector sounding data then uh, what interpolation attribute you want to use from the table of course it is depth not the coordinate system so you click on depth depth then you, it's very important to click on the plus sign to add it to the attribute vector layer. so add so when you add under this type, of course it is points. So you have other one structures, break line. So point. Then you have various interpolation method you can use. But I'll just leave it as um, um default is linear. So you have the clock to char, that's the cubic mm -hmm. method. So the extent for us to define extent, you can use the um the map canvas extent. Or can we use a calculus from layer sounding data? Well, let's say this map canvas extent. So if you scroll down, 
You see, when you click on the map canvas assistance, it has actually generated that automatically. Then it has um, calculated the rows and columns so as to the raster because, of course, chain is a raster format of visualizing your data. Mm -hmm. So it's going to bring out a result for you in a raster format. So now the question is do you want to save this file or leave it as a temporary file to view on your map interface? But uh, let's assume I want to save to file. Just to take, let me create a folder. CRM and control. Okay, so I click. So yeah, save CRM. Save. Then run. So we have to be patient. Some seconds. Okay. So I can close this. Now let's um, reorder our layer and bring the tearing down. So now guys, you can see you can see the um, distribution of the data. So from here you can actually deduce that um, this particular there's a uh, this particular area of the area of interest of the study area is um, probably lower or higher. And but how do you know from the values you know that uh, you have four point something then going up you have two so meaning this particular area uh, area that you have uh, the depth is uh, higher so you have four points almost five meters then going up you have three meters two meters zero point seven meters so this um, with the time generated you can actually use um, the area that you have um, more depth in your from the water and the surface so you can still go ahead and uh, change the symbology for it to look better so let's quickly change the symbology so you just need to double click symbology so here you can change it to a single one to the color so you can use a different color ramp since we are dealing with water we might want to use from white to blue okay so if you look at this value meaning um, we are going to have um, a, a lighter white with um, um what's it called lower depth white plus it have added as a dark and blue color so i think this is good so you can click apply okay so you can see this is visually appealing so let's you can change this to coin server let's apply or let's discrete okay so here you can actually uh, manipulate how you want your interpretation to come up okay i think i'll go with this exact and then continuous okay I think it's a, a point server that's gonna work. Apply. Okay. So zoom to layer. Okay, I guess we we'll have to change this back to apply. Okay. Okay. So many you can understand from the um, um, region here that areas that are, are lower in depth are lighter in color, lighter blue, whereas areas that are darker that has more depth, like from five meters upward, are in um, in darker blue. So from here, using the interpolation now. We can generate the contour like oh no contour is just uh, lines there are lines that shows area of um, equal elevation value so from here you can generate your contour so let's come to our processing toolbox again you click on contour and enter so here yeah, you see raster extraction contour so you can double click on that a window is going to pop up so here yeah, what of course it's a lot of 
I spend spend the band at all. That's a multiple is band one. Now what interval between quantum lines? Now your interval you are going to specify depends on the values, the lowest and the highest value you have. And uh, our value here range from let's say zero to six. But if you are specifying an interval of ten, meaning you are not going to see any line at all. Let's try it. So if I click on run, let's see, let's see the result. So if I click on run. That's what we're going to get. I guess I have to be patient again a little bit. Okay, now tax is complete. Contours exec executed. For here, let me zoom to later. You can't see anything based on the fact that the interval that we actually um, specified. We don't have that kind of value in our area of interest. What do we do? We try and uh, give it a value that could cover our area of interest. Let me give it one and let's run. There you go. You can see now we have the contour lines. I think I'll use 0 0.5 because I want to see more contours. Let me use the interval 0 0.5. Run. Okay, close. So I can remove these two. I think I prefer this way. Mm -hmm. So here again, you can now um, change the symbology for the contours. Um, basically, uh, we use a brown color to specify contours. It denotes contours. So you can come here and use brown. Let's make the line a little bit thicker. So stroke width. Apply. Okay. So guys, you can see. You can see. Let me remove this point data. These are contours. What about label contours? Let me go to properties. Label. Single label. So what field? Which of the fields with elevation? Elevation. Apply. Okay, you can see. Now you can see. You can see. So, like the team suggested, our height is moving this way, from top towards the bottom, and the, top, the contour also what give us that then validate that information. So you can even um, change the um, label, the placement for the label, for the contours can be curved and, and specify to be on the line instead of above line. You can even create a buffer. So it's going to look like there will be a shadow around um, the text. You see? So you guys, from a bathymetric data, we will be able to create a team triangulated regular network for us to better visualize the surface morphology of our area of interest and it helps us to denote the height that um, the height distribution on the surface. So, also from the team um, um, that was um, generated, we were able to create a contour showing places of equal height in our head of interest. So guys, I hope um, this helps. See you later. So thank you guys for staying to the end of this video. I bet you learned one or two things from the lesson. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, put on the notification button and watch out for more educative videos. See you guys next time.